Dear viewers, recently there has been a notification from government starting from 1st of April. If you do not link your PAN with the Aadhaar card, the PAN that you are holding will become inoperative. For the last couple of years, government has been talking about this, extending the deadlines and constantly extending the deadlines. It gave an impression that the government is not serious and it will constantly keep changing the deadline. But subsequently, government said that now to link Aadhaar and PAN, you have to pay a penalty of 1,000 rupees. Now government has moved on from there and now it is telling from 1st April, if you have not linked your Aadhaar and PAN, your PAN card is going to become inoperative. In this episode, the expert of the week, Chartered Accountant, Sriram is going to talk to you about all consequences that might follow in the event that you have not linked your Aadhaar and PAN. This is NRA Money Clinic for you. And I am Dr. Chandra Khan, but your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Dear viewers, Chartered Accountant Sri Ram Rao is a popular faculty member on our channel. He has appeared multiple number of times. He has given you knowledge pertaining to taxation, compliance requirement, what you need to do and what you shouldn't be doing about various tax related issues on this channel. He is a practicing chartered accountant. He is a partner at Nitin J. Shetty and Co. Practices direct taxation, international taxation, has to his credit solving the tax related issues of a lot of high net worth individuals across globe. Welcome to the show, C.A. Sri Ram Rao. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sriram Rao, we have a burning issue on our hand. Uh, we are inundated with lots of queries regarding PAN and Aadhaar linking. You have done detailed videos in the past. I will be giving those links to the benefit of my audience here, how to link PAN and Aadhaar. Also, you have done one detailed video on how to record your NRI status on the IT portal. Today, my question to you is, what's new in this system and why government is telling that uh, Aadhaar and PAN has to be linked from 1st April. Uh, is it really mandatory or is there more to it? What do you have to say about this? See, um, Government of India has been telling from say 1st April 2017 that PAN and Aadhaar has to be linked. But they kept extending the deadline for linking of this PAN and Aadhaar due to various reasons. Okay, And uh, lately, in 2022, they came out with the notification wherein they said that one has to mandatorily link PAN and other if they have a other and if they don't have other they should must possess an other if they are eligible to obtain an other and link that with the PAN. This is what the I mean, mandate of that and they had given one deadline say by 31st of March 2023 one must link their other and PAN and if someone links the Aadhaar and PAN prior to 1st, uh, 30th of June 2022, then there would not have been any additional fee levied on such linking. So after that, there was additional fee and presently there is an additional fee for linking of this Aadhaar, uh, rupees 1000. Dear viewers, some of you have asked me a question. How will I know whether my PAN is linked to other or not? I had told my chartered accountant, I have told my commercial accountant, we had told a friend or relative to do these things. How will I know whether my PAN and other are linked or not? For your benefit, we are giving a link here in the description box below, as well as showing you here on the screen. Go to this link, follow the online steps given there, and you could be knowing whether your Aadhaar and PAN are linked uh, with each other or not. Sriram, now I know that there is a deadline. The next question is, if somebody did not link PAN and Aadhaar within the stipulated time and he enters the new financial year 23-24, what consequences will follow? Um, the consequence is very simple. If the person is required to link the Aadhaar and PAN, and if he doesn't link by 31st of March 2023, starting from 1st of April 2023, this PAN will become inoperative. It will not get cancelled, but it will become inoperative. Siram, you told that the, if it is not linked, it will become inoperative. Correct. Uh, what happens? Does he have to apply for a fresh PAN card there afterwards? Or what happens to this inoperative uh, PAN card? See, uh, as I said, 
the pan will not get cancelled the pan will just get inoperative that means nobody can operate that pan meaning thereby my pan if it is get inoperative then i cannot use it for any purpose for example with a pan i need to provide it to my income uh, you know payer that means if i have you know kept some uh, deposits and i am getting some interest there on then the payer of the interest is liable to deduct tds on my pan so i need to provide that pan to him but if my pan is inoperative then automatically that pan cannot be used by that person and he will say your pan is inoperative so i cannot give you the credit of the tax deducted so similarly say i need to file my it returns if i go to my it portal login i will not be able to log in to my portal at all i will not be able to make any you know file i cannot file my returns at all online i cannot do any other online compliance also so automatically the pan cannot be used at all even though it is as good as you don't have a pan mm. but that doesn't mean that pan is getting cancelled so you need to apply for a fresh pan nothing the pan will be there for you you need to make it operative by linking your pan to aadhar uh, this is a deadly move by the government now if the reports are to be believed there are crores and crores of pan cards which have not been attached to aadhar uh, it gives a doubt in my mind see india has most of its population covered on aadhar that means there is ample education information which is available with the general public that they need to have an aadhar likewise they had a pan and now they also know that the pan has to be linked it can only mean to say that there are a lot of duplicate pans in the system which governments would like to weed it out now this very action that pan if it does not link to aadhar by end of this month 31st of march uh, 2023 it's as good as like you know freezing your economic activity you can't claim tds you can't file tax return you can't get into any you no know, sale or uh, purchase of property whatever that requires mentioning of your pan card you are completely debarred from getting into the uh, activity like that so it's an emergency situation and people have to take it with extreme seriousness this is a top priority on hand and if you are thinking that things can be normal and by paying some penalty you can uh, have things uh, as a normal thing probably you should not depend on such thoughts and if it is a genuine reason on which you are still not linked please take cues from this video and go and link your pan and other uh, with the full seriousness uh, mr shira when the laws are enacted uh, there could be aggrieved categories of people because of which government will sometimes give exception okay for if you belong to such and such a category you need not follow this see our audience is an nra audience primarily of course residents do watch our videos to a great extent so are there any exception to this rule okay if some people belong to this particular category they need not do or they have a time exemption or there is some exemptions given to them uh, what's what's uh, your research says about this as far as uh, linking of pan and aadhar is concerned so there is some exemptions given okay it will continue okay even after 1st of april 2023 but that exemption has got twin conditions one of the mm-hmm. condition is the person should not have obtained an aadhar or he should not have applied for an aadhar so if a person is not having an aadhar that is one of the condition and over and above that if either of one of the other conditions what i am saying if he is coming under that category then he need not link pan and other okay now i'll go one by one if person is not having an other or not applied for an other and such person is from the state of assam jammu and kashmir and meghalaya mm. so those persons are exempt similarly a person who is not having an other and such person is a non resident as per income tax act mm. or such person is a oci that is not a citizen of india okay mm-hmm. or an oci for that matter he also need not link pan and aadhar okay further a person who is not applied an aadhar and such person is of a age of 80 years or more he also mm-hmm. need not link pan and aadhar these are the category of person if they have not obtained an aadhar then they need not link pan and aadhar 
if they have obtained an other they must link pan and other this is what the uh, exemption notification says so the any categorization here which is uh, given or exceptions which is given is subjected to that somebody is not having an aadhar whether you belong to these two states of meghalaya or uh, jammu kashmir or you are an nra because of which you don't have an aadhar or an oci then you have an exemption to not to link aadhar and pan but Correct. as long as you have an aadhar then is it fair to say that you must comply and link aadhar with pan is it a fair statement or yes, is it is a fair of, yes. on my part to interpret it yes it is fair statement so even if is if he is an nra and he has an aadhar card and it is mandatory for them to link pan with aadhar yes as per the exemption notification it is mandatory uh, mr shriram i got your point uh, certain categories have got exemption we have 140 billion people in india how will the it authorities will come to know where i live uh, whether i uh, you know belong to an exempted category how will the it department come to know about it it's not a joke uh, tell me how will the it authorities will know about um, as you said the huge data of pan and other it is humanly impossible for one to you know check and verify whether that one person is exempted from uh, linking of pan and other or not but the system can identify so when a person he applies for pan his state or the address would have been mentioned in that state would have been mentioned assam jammu and kashmir and meghalaya if such person is there automatically he will be exempted from linking of pan and other further while applying for pan even the date of birth would have been given so as per that also uh, if the person is above the year of 80 then he also will be exempted from linking of pan and other similarly a person while applying his pan if he has mentioned that he is a non resident then also the system will pick however a person presently you know he is a non resident but earlier he was not a non resident then if he had shifted his pan jurisdiction to international taxation officer then also system will pick that such person is a non resident okay similarly a person who have obtained pan as a oca because for indian citizens and person who is not a citizen of india there are different forms for application of pan so if a person has obtained a pan as not a citizen of india or a person who has obtained a pan as a indian citizen but now he became a person citizen outside of india then he updated his citizenship status with the jurisdictional officer and got it updated in the back end of their system at that time also system will pick and say that these persons are you know exempted from linking of pan and other that is why these persons pan will not become operative inoperative even if they do not link pan and other uh, mr shriram i am an nr i file my tax return involve my chartered accountant or i'll use some methods to file my returns or update whatever the tax related issues are but i do not know whether my pan is under a residential taxation uh, jurisdiction of it or under international taxation jurisdiction of an it at an individual level how will i come to know whether it is under resident or whether it is under the international so since you are a nri or a oci for that matter your pan must necessarily be in international taxation officer okay to know where your jurisdiction lies presently you must log into your it portal and thereafter go to your profile and check there in there is some something called as jurisdiction details okay so if you click that it will show where your pan lies the assessing officers email id everything would have been shown there and even the address of the jurisdictional assessing officer so if your jurisdiction has a wording such as intl or international taxation then it means that your pan is with international taxation officer if there is no such wording then it means that your pan is with the resident jurisdictional officer oh so just by logging in we'll come to know about it yes i have a follow up question for you yes. i'm an nra and my pan is not showing as international taxation category 
that right. INTL what you mentioned is not visible in my profile. Right. Uh, what consequences will follow after first step? If your PAN is not with the international taxation jurisdictional officer, then the system will automatically think that uh, you are a resident. So, since you are a resident, then it is mandatory for you to obtain an other and link the PAN and other. Thereby, if you don't do that, uh, you know, uh, activity of linking the PAN and other, then automatically your PAN will become inoperative. So it's a risk somebody is carrying. So go uh, log into your website, check your profile, and look at the jurisdiction. It should reflect as INTL or international. If not, you have to take a remedial action. Otherwise, the system will just think that you are a resident uh, uh, category and you have an obligation to do it. Correct. I understand uh, that anybody who applied for PAN card, being in an RI or a, as an OCI, at the time of applying for uh, PAN card itself, uh, you applied from an international uh, jurisdiction. It will, as a default, it will show up. Right. But countless of Indians, they obtain their PAN card being residents. Then they migrate to different parts of the world, uh, either by negligence or ignorance. They have not uh, changed it to international status. Then you have a risk which is running with you. And please look into this and you have to do it. Uh, our uh, purpose of doing the video is to solve this problem. Let's say some NRI is in a residence tax jurisdiction as per the profile. What can he do to remedy the situation? If someone finds that he is a non-resident and he is a OCA or he is a OCA and his PAN is with the jurisdictional resident officer, then he must first find out who would be his jurisdictional officer in international taxation ward or circle. Okay, There is a hierarchy. Because it based on address or the PIN code uh, where your permanent address in India is. So if you do not have permanent address in India, then centrally, that is in New Delhi, your international taxation ward or jurisdiction will lie. Okay. First, two, one must find out where your international taxation jurisdiction officer is situated, where his office is. Okay. Obtain his uh, you know ward details. Then apply to him in simple letter to acquire your PAN to his jurisdiction, okay? And you must tell that presently your PAN is with such and such officer, but since you are a non-resident or a OCI, his or your PAN is coming within his jurisdiction. That is why you are asking him to acquire his PAN from the resident jurisdiction to international taxation jurisdiction. You must also substantiate with documentary evidence that Presently, you are a non-resident. Okay. Okay. This is how it has to be done. And at that point in time, it is also advisable to give a copy of this application to the present resident jurisdictional assisting officer as well as to the present jurisdictional principal commissioner of income tax so that they will be in a position to make necessary arrangement for shifting of your PAN from jurisdictional ward uh, resident jurisdictional ward to international taxation jurisdictional ward. Yeah, since yeah. it involves manual work, uh, it will be cumbersome and it is difficult for an NRI sitting outside of India to do this. Probably yeah. my best advice for you is look out for a chartered accountant in your territory, wherever you are from, whichever part of India are you from, or look for some service providers who can help you with this and take their help and get it done. Uh, don't leave these things unattended. Uh, small actions today can uh, either create you lots of uh, trouble in days ahead or will smoothen your journey. So people will analyze, simply will keep on commenting, stating that this is tax harassment, uh, this is a tax problem and other things. Let us do our part of what we need to do. Later on, uh, then we'll see how the system is going to take this up. Uh, any timelines when somebody uh, applies for this uh, change of jurisdiction from residence ward to international uh, tax wards? Uh, any timelines which is visible or from your practice? Is there any uh, timelines you can mention? It's a, one can say it's a very simple process actually. The international taxation ward officer needs to acquire the PAN. Then the jurisdictional ward officer has to push the PAN. It's all system driven. 
but while pushing the pan there will be some you know access or access control you know what we can say in the system wherein the hierarchy wise officers say the additional commissioner or the commissioner of in, uh, income tax you know wherein this pan presently is we also need to authorize this transfer of pan mm. so there would be certain timeline minimum of 15 days it will take mm. sometimes due to you know time barring work which the jurisdictional officers are carrying out they will push this work to future dates so mm. it might take you know sometimes uh, uh, you know 3 months or 6 months also but constant follow up will definitely you know uh, will um, make this work happen smoothly there should not be much of an issue right so uh, looks to be simple but there is no turnaround time uh, there is no set limits probably this is one area probably the tax authorities have to look at how they can smoothen the journey uh, right. from one jurisdiction to another jurisdiction right. uh, shriram in our video which we did on aadhar card uh, and uh, how to link pan and aadhar we had mentioned at that time the nris are not required to take an aadhar and right. that one to two days limit was there and right. the nris were taking a refuge and why why to say that they were taking a refuge they had they had the difficulty they couldn't stay here for 182 days nris are also responsible uh, what changes have, have happened since the uh, time we did this video i heard that now from uh, when i walked into one of the other seva uh, centers nris could just walk in and get an aadhar card uh, can you please update for the benefit of nri community the oci foreign nationals who watch my channel uh, the present eligibility to obtain aadhar yes as per the provisions of aadhar act every person who becomes a resident as per aadhar act must obtain pan uh, must obtain aadhar it means that a person who has not obtained an aadhar and if he wants to obtain an aadhar he must reside in india for at least 182 days during preceding 12 months time period before he, uh, the application which he submits for getting an aadhar right so naturally a person who is a resident as per aadhar act should obtain aadhar however right. a non resident or an oci need not obtain aadhar as per aadhar act but recently that is you know uh, about 3 and 3 years back on 20th september 2019 there was a gazetted notification which stated that a non resident being a citizen of india so a non resident being a citizen of india upon his arrival to india must hmm. obtain an aadhar even though he is a non resident so there was a relaxation there uh, 182 days has yes. been waived off in case of an nri he is a citizen of india so he couldn't right. leave here he couldn't get an aadhar now the next opportunity when he is there in india he can straight away walk into an aadhar seva center uh, uh, and and obtain his aadhar this is the change yes. from the time what we did uh, that video last time correct however this rule does not apply to an oci hmm. an oci can obtain aadhar only if he becomes a resident in india as per aadhar act it means he must start residing in india and before applying for an aadhar he must reside in india for at least 182 days during preceding 12 months period so this is a must for an oci so mr shriram i'll just summarize whatever we discussed now uh, nris need to know now that you can obtain an aadhar whenever you come to india next time walk into right. an aadhar seva center apply for an aadhar card 182 days requirement has been waived off if you are an indian citizen and an nri however if you are a oci foreign national who falls into the eligible category then still as per the aadhar act you have to wait for 182 days to get the aadhar card please note aadhar card is an id based on biometrics it is not your tax identification number or it's a proof of your citizenship it is essential that if you have an aadhar whether you are a resident or whether you are an nri please link your aadhar and pan card if you don't have an aadhar go to the it website record your pan as reflecting your nri status 
check your profile to see whether your tax jurisdiction reflects as INTL, meaning international tax jurisdiction. If it is not showing as INTL, take necessary measures, contact your chartered accountant, service providers, commercial accountants, or whoever provides this service to make sure that your jurisdiction reflects as INTL in the IT website. If you do these actions, then you have nothing to worry about. If it is not, then expect trouble from 1st of April whenever you try to transact in India. Mr. Shriram, thank you very much for your time and you have given the required information. Uh, we are doing this video quite late, but still there is uh, quite a bit of time. They can do things from wherever they are. And I, on behalf of NRI community, would like to thank you for your time and courtesy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Dear viewers, hope the video that I have done today helped you to understand what you need to be doing to link your Aadhaar and PAN card, who need not do it, and what is your obligation, what consequences might follow after 1st of April 2023. If it did give you the required information, please do like this video. If you are a person who is watching my channel for the first time, or if you are yet to subscribe for the channel, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon. Don't forget to share this video with your near and dear ones, friends and relatives, and on the WhatsApp groups, so that every NRI gets the message from this video and will take the necessary action. Thank you very much for watching this episode of NRI Money Clinic. I shall be back with you next Tuesday with yet another topic, with yet another expert. Till then, stay safe. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.